Okay, so today we will talk about interquartile range for group dot. So in our previous lesson, we talked about interquart IQR or interquartile range for ungrouped dot. So today we will discuss about IQR for group dot. So in here, interquartile range is the same way as what we had on ungroup. So IQR is just equal, okay? It's equal to the third quartile minus the second quartile. Okay. So here, so we have Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so but it is a little bit different when we talk about group data. So how to find quartile number one and quartile number three if we're talking about group data. So for quartile one, we need to have the lower boundary of the quartile class, okay? We need to have n over four. So um, this n here, it should be one n, but since um, it doesn't really like make sense if I also include, um, I also include the one here or I will put one in here. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? So for quartile number three, I need to have three n here because I am trying to look for the third quartile, okay? So if you can remember um, when we did had um, the discussion about quantiles, okay? So quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So we are talking about this three and one in here, okay? So minus less than cumulative frequency before the particular quartile class. So let's say we have the third, um, by the way, the first thing we should do is to find what is the, the class of the first quartile and the second quartile. I will explain to you later on this um, video. Okay, so F stands for the frequency of the quartile class. So let's say third quartile class, first quartile class. N stands for the total number of data, or that is the sum of F, I. Okay, and H is the class to it. So let's try to move on to the next slide. So given the data sample solved for the IQR, so here I already have all the data um, available. So we have five classes. Okay, so this is the first class, second class, third class. We have class intervals and we have the class boundaries. Okay, so when we talk about, or when, when, when we try to solve for the IQR or the interquartile range, that is equal to the third quartile minus the first quartile. So what should we do first? Okay, so we should find first, first and the third quartile. So finding the first quartile, the first thing to do, this is the very first step, is we need to have n over four. So we are trying to find the class. We have five classes here, but we don't know which one, which class, is the first quartile class and the third quartile class. So let's see. So N over four. So N stands for the total number, right? So the total number of data or the sum of FI. So in this case, so we have this as our N. So this is, the sum of our fi. 
or this is also our n. Okay, so 36. So n over 4. So to find the first quartile class, we need to have n over 4. So that is 9. Okay, so to find which class 9 belongs, so do you remember um, the explanation I have about less than cumulative frequency? So let's just imagine that we are um, on a, or riding, we will ride a, a, like any kind of transportation, but the seats are only good for eight people. So for the first class, the seats are only for eight person. But this one we have nine. So which one does this nine here be fitted in? So it will be on the transportation that has 14 seats, okay? Or it's just um, like say a, a vehicle, a car, which has 14 seats, okay? Because we cannot fit on this because there's, there's only eight seats, okay? So this one here, this second class will be our first quartile class, okay? So let's just me clear all of my drawings. Okay, so that is the first quartile class. So this one is our first quartile class, okay? Q1 class, this is class, okay? Not exactly the first quartile because we need to solve for it. So next one is we need to find the class for the third quartile. So we have 3n over 4. So why over 4? It's always over 4 because we are um, talking about quartiles. And quartiles, this refers to dividing into four equal parts, right? So we have 3n over 4. That is 3 times 36. That is 108 over 4 or 27. So 27. Okay, so let's do the same um, thing that we had for the first quartile class. So in here, we have... 27. So we would try to find the class of this 27. So here, can we, be, can we be fitted in this transportation or this car or this bus, which has 24 seats? Of course, no. Can we be fitted in this kind of transportation that has 33 seats? Yes, because we are 27, there are 27 people. So it can be, it won't be fitted in here, but it can be fitted in here. Okay, so this will be now our third quartile class. So I'll just highlight it for you. So it's easier for us to do that. I have it on different colors too. So you can easily see. Okay, um, the first quartile class and the third quartile class. Okay, so now we can now solve for the first quartile and the third quartile. So this is only the class where our data or data will come from solving for the first quartile. And this class here um, is where we can get all the data to solve for our third quartile. Okay, so first quartile is equal to the lower boundary of the first quartile class. So lower boundaries in here. So I'll just try to annotate first, annotate spotlight. Okay, so the lower boundary of the first quartile class, this is, this is the first quartile class. So all of the data will come from this class, okay? So 19.5, that is lower boundary. Then we have 
n over 4. So n number 4, we have here 9, here, and minus less than. So here, guys, um, what is the formula, by the way? So we have this is actually minus less than c cumulative frequency before, right? Uh, that is not a pen. So I need to have a pen. So here, this is C. Oh, sorry. I have C, F, B. Okay. Or less than cumulative frequency before the first quartile class. So if this is the less than C, F of our first quartile class, the less than C, F, B or before will be eight. So this is before, yes, we have less than C, F, B. So before, which is eight. So that's why I have eight also in here. Okay. So next one is over F. So over F, so over F. So this is, the frequency of the first quartile class. So look at the frequency, that is six. That is where I get six here. And times H. So this is our H or sometimes it is I, represented as I, or that is simply the class with. So looking at the class interval 10 to 19. So we just count 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So do you remember how to um, get the class to with? Okay, so that is actually 10. That's, that's why I have 10 in here. Okay. So next one is it. So we need to simplify it and we will, we will arrive at a certain value. Then we, try, we will try to find the third quartile. So with that, we need to have another one. And this is the um, lower boundary of the third quartile class. So all of the information now will or data will be coming from this one. Okay, so the lower boundary of the third quartile class, we have 39.5. This one. Then we have this is three three n over four, right? If you can remember, three n over four. And that is 27, I have already it in here. So 27 minus the less than, this is minus the less than C, F, B, or the less than cumulative frequency before. So if this is the cumulative frequency of third quartile class, before is 24. Okay, so that's why I have 24 in here. So I have too many writings now. <laughs> and then I have nine because this is the frequency. So frequency of my third quartile class. And 10, of course, that is class with. Okay, so simplifying all of this further. And remember, IQR is quartile three minus quartile number one, okay? So I will simplify it. So I have 42.83 for quartile number three and 21.16 for my quartile number one, okay? So um, the, the result for here, guys, is 21.16. The result for this one 
is 42.83. So, so I'll just get their difference. And there I have my interquartile range, 21.67. Okay, is that clear? Okay, by the way, I'm looking at our quartile, first quartile class. So our first quartile, we get the result of 21.16, okay? So the result for Q1. So if you um, solve this one, you have 21.16, and it belongs to this class interval, right? So it is in between this one. And our third quartile, we have 42.83, which is also in between, somewhere in between this class interval, okay? And... That's all for interquartile range for group data. Okay, thank you and have a nice day. So this is Teacher Dennis. Goodbye.